Storygram Network. Hello, we are the Sonoma Community Center podcast, a place of creativity, connection, and community. We highlight the artists, teachers, and the community that come through the doors of our historic brick building, often called the heart of Sonoma. We share local tips and shout outs to our home, Sonoma Valley. And we are your hosts, Molly Spencer. Gerardo Diaz. We are the engagement team of the Sonoma Community Center. <laughs> This is the Sonoma Community Center podcast with uh, Gerardo Diaz and Molly Spencer. Hey, Molly, how you doing? Well, we're breaking in gently, but here we are. It's the end of the year. <laughs> we just wrapped up a little staff party. Yes, we did. White elephant exchange. You know, my first question was to Vanessa. I was like, "Hey, are we gonna work after this? I mean, come on! I'm, I have a food coma, you know. Of course just you do. Eating all that stuff. She's like, "Nah, you get to go home." But then I remember, <laughs> I remember that we had to do a podcast too. So <laughs> here That's we right. are, people. We picked yeah. a really good time when we go into food coma. I yeah. can't think since I was here for twelve hours yesterday. Yeah. You know what my wishes are. <laughs> <laughs> going Sleep. home. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to do this a little different. This is our second year where we have the podcast party and we bring in everyone from each department and talk a little bit about what the successes were for 2023. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be a success, just stories and kind of wishes of what it looks like for next year, not just for Sonoma Community Center in general and department, but maybe personal stories yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So first, and we had to break it down. We couldn't bring <laughs> everybody in at the same it's a time. Big crowd. Big <laughs> it's crowd. a big crowd. <laughs> you want to have a COVID party and put everybody <laughs> out for this season. It's not done yet. Yeah. yeah. Trending. Yeah, not yeah, here yeah, though. Yeah. Hope not. <laughs> so first thing we have is the ceramics department. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have Meg introduce. Yeah. I'm Meg. I'm the director of the department. I'm Azalea. <laughs> She's Azalea shy, folks. Is She's shy. Our amazing studio coordinator. We put her on the spot a little bit today. She Ceramics. she didn't know what she was stepping into. This. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not being interviewed by a puppet, which is what That's we did true. yesterday. Oh. Oscar's over Do there. we have Oscar? Oscar's Oscar here. Today. I'm gonna make him step in for other departments. <laughs> <Celia>. I know. <laughs> Azalea's Azalea's losing it. Yeah. And that's okay. Did you have seen her when she got here? Tis the season of joy. <laughs> it looked like she was in another world. She was like. <laughs> hey, so we're going on. You're good. You're good. We're, we're going to let her take a little pass. Yep, since yep, Dan's yep, had yep. a little experience with this. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. I'm Dan. Dan, tell us a little bit about you. You've actually been a guest on our show before. I what have. Best. Thanks for having me. Uh, having you back. <laughs> I'm the artist in residence at the community center for ceramics, but I'm leaving. I know. So, <laughs> but, so not sad. but not really. Leaving, but not so much. Exactly. You know, we always have ceramics and artists in residence. We want to keep them all like if they were little pocket pals, you know, <laughs> walk around. But Dan, I know that this is one thing I'm going to miss from 2023. And that's your incredible laugh. Not only <laughs> your art, but you just make everything so joyful. So we're excited to have you around for another, I think, three months. Yeah, And three months. maybe you and Meg can talk a little bit about in the ceramics department. I know we have a lot coming up, but especially touch on the point of your new class that you're co-teaching next year. That's right. And it starts in January, right? It starts at the end of January, but Dan will probably have a workshop coming up in the middle of January and early January. So if you're interested in taking class with just Dan, sort of a precursor to our co-taught eight-week class that we'll be doing, look for look on the website for that coming soon. Yes. A lot of our classes are already up, folks. If you're listening to this at the end of 2023 or the beginning of January, what's your workshop that you're doing, Dan? I'm going to do a fragmented body class. So I'll show some demos on how to make hands and feet, maybe some arms. And then we'll kind of distort them and find ways to make a finished piece out of a fragment. 
in your show, some people may be listening for the first time. You just actually are breaking down your show right now. Brief synopsis of how beautiful it was. But can you tell us the title again and where you're going with some of that? Because I know there was kind of a multi multimedia dimension to it. Yeah, it was called This Yearning for Longevity. And it is work having to do with queer archiving and a lot to do with the body and current politics and a lot of writing that is kind of a queer archive dash love letter. And so a lot of little things yeah. all in one. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. Whoever was able to make it and experience that, very lucky. So oh, anyway, <laughs> we're exciting. I'm excited about your and Meg's class too. So you're kind of doing the fragmented sculptural. I won't even try to <laughs> do a synopsis on it because I think people that know you or look at your work will be intrigued. And this class kind of gives us a glimpse into your process and how to do that. But the next one, I'm very curious about it. Meg, maybe you want to chime in. Well, I feel super excited because I didn't teach much at all at the center this year. And so I feel excited to be stepping back into my making and teaching shoes and even more excited that it's alongside Dan. Yay. Both Dan and I have backgrounds not only in working with clay, but also in performance. In a lot of our classes here at the center, especially in the ceramics department, focus on the practical fundamentals. How are you throwing when you sit down at the wheel? What are you hand building? How are we hand building functional work? And we will often offer sculptural classes, but what we don't get to offer often is classes where we engage with how we step into the studio and how we interact with clay as a material itself, body to body, human body to clay body. And so this class is a little bit experimental in the sense that it's not about what you make. It's about how we make together and how you interact with clay. So we'll be doing a series of exercises and lecture demos. So every week folks will come in, we'll have a theme and Dan and I will present a series of slides or do a small demo. And then together as a group, we'll be doing some really interesting participatory yes. activities <laughs> involving clay inside, outside, using our bodies, working with each other. Would you say, just coming from a movement perspective, would someone that's not necessarily in the ceramics world, be interested in that? Is there a physical component to it? Is that, you know, <laughs> sometimes that scares people and sometimes they're like, oh, here's my level into... Here's my access. Point. Yeah, here's my access right. points. But what, what can you make when you don't have to make a thing? Uh, yeah. So that's a really it. exciting door to open up. And it's also a really engaging course for folks to take that are interested in art history, that are interested in... Like Dan was talking about, a big part of Dan's work is archival processes. So how are we learning about the people that have already done these things? And then a big part of my practice is just how do we step into the studio as a maker? So whether you're in ceramics or not, this eight-week course is going to be a lot about building you a toolkit to step into the studio and feel like you have something to jump off of. Okay. A toolkit. I yeah. love that, no matter what it is. Azalea, we're going to hand that microphone back to you for one second because you came on board in uh, springtime, right? Yeah, it was uh, in May. And you're our ceramics tech and you, it's like unfolding a little onion every time, getting to know a little bit more about you. Like you have just this amazing photography background and movement. Hopefully Azalea will be teaching some dance classes in the future as well. But the way you go in ceramics, you have a sculptural kind of background too. Yeah. Explain your work through radio <laughs> or podcasting. <laughs> I like the process of hand building and a lot of the time my pieces are like different visions that I've had just like going through the house and something pops in my head and I have to tackle it or it just kind of taps at my shoulder constantly. But I do have a wheel at my house. I'm practicing that as well, but it's like taking a lot longer and it feels less in my control. And you're graduating. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I, you graduated. Yes. I just had my last day of school on the 15th. From so, Sonoma State. Mm -hmm, yeah. With studio art. So. Wow. Yeah. I'm super happy. Just going on down the line. What are some of your wishes for personally, but also for 2024, but also in being involved in the community center, directions that you want to go in and explore? I 
was just talking with my mom recently about maybe teaching a class with her. She's deaf and we wanted to maybe offer a class in ASL. Amazing. So that's something I'm really excited for and looking forward to. I'm excited too. Are both of your parents deaf? Mm-hmm. I love that. And just you being a child of that and a different perspective. So we welcome her and I hope that happens. It will. Me too. We're I'm just excited. Make it. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. <laughs> we can do that here. Dan, personally, what do you have coming up for next year? I know you're here for a little while. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> I have a one month residency in April. So I'll be gone for a month. It's in Vermont. It's the Vermont Studio Center. Is it also like a ceramic studio or is it multi? I got the fellowship for sculpture, but I think they're more known for their painting oh, okay. uh, department. But yeah, it's multiple departments. And I don't think they're exactly split among all of that. It's just the sculpture facilities are in a different building. Yeah. <laughs> As it goes usually. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be there for a month and then I'm still waiting back to hear about future endeavors. Residencies or just kind of, yeah. yeah. Other residencies and... <laughs> Sorry. <about it. laughs> well, you continue writing. So what we're all looking here is we had a staff exchange, white elephant <laughs> gift. And Dan, if you may remember and listen to, I don't know what episode that was when Takeshi and I interviewed Dan, but it ended with David Bowie and Glam. Yes. So Dan was the winner <laughs> of the lava lamp. That's this beautiful silver thing that might appear in their car yes. in the future. <laughs> and it's sitting here and it's really mesmerizing everybody. So we're getting a little off track. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. Oh. Keep up the glam. <laughs> yes. But yeah, uh, just residencies and such. Okay. Yeah. The future is pretty open. Good. Yeah. Best way to find you. Yes. If you're not here. Is it Instagram or It would be, website? yeah. Instagram's good. You can find on my website. I have an email attached there and Wonderful. you can contact me that way. It's danielclausen.com. And that's C-L-A-U-S-O-N, right? Yes, Mm -hmm. correct. Clausen. Yes. As I like to call you, (laughs) Daniel (laughs) Clausen. Exactly. (laughs) Yes. But those are my, those are my things. Awesome. Meg. Meg. Well, personally, I am excited to be heading into my third year as director. Yay. God, that went quick. Can't believe it's been that long. It, It really isn't that long. Two years isn't long, but it went by fast and I feel like first year I was deer in the headlights, figuring it all out. Second year I felt a little bit like, okay, get some systems, get the floor under our feet. How do yes. we want to build this? We were lucky to double our membership this year with Azalea's help and Dan's support, along with many others in our team. And I have my eyes set personally on this year being about making some time for my own professional development and making work. So yeah. I want to get back in the studio. Ceramics. Yeah, I want to be making my own work and applying to shows and... Wonderful. Yeah, Yay. being a little bit more present in the studio in that way. Yes. Yeah. God. They say we're very lucky to work at the Sonoma Community Center, but sometimes you're so busy and it's a wonderful... I, I love being able to share everybody's art and the artists, but you don't always get the time to create yourself. So yeah, I think it's... Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. I think it's, it's one of the biggest welcome back questions to you. that we have with... People working in arts management yeah. is how do we get them back in the studio sustainably? So I love that. That's my 2024 goal. And I don't know about you, but Gerardo and I were talking about, we want to have you on next year for part two, history of clay. Oh, sure. Or You're what's up happening. On my skills. You oh, need Dan for that. Cause my, <laughs> exactly. I can talk about clay for a long time, but my yeah, history but might mining, be a little bit. How, yeah. You know, yeah. You were just uh, sharing with us. I could us talk all day about that. About the mining and how you, we it's can't access. Yeah. 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 We're so affected by larger industry and mining practices. Most of our materials that we use in clay, all the clay that we purchase is made by mixing, just like baking, individually mined materials that are feldspars and rocks that are dug in mines and quarries. And so when a larger industry takes over a certain material that we also use in ours, ceramics is a very small industry, it significantly affects us. So when lithium wow. goes in batteries, we can't use it in our glazes. And when the Custer mine goes bankrupt, we lose a material that's in 70% of the things that we do. So we're always trying to be adaptive that's to that. 
fascinating. Yeah. And we will bring that back. We'll have both of you on. Kind yeah, of share yeah. We can talk those. about it right now. Just it's the effects of the world. Two, yeah. Part two. I know. We're all sorry, other departments. <laughs> about ceramics but we, we will i definitely want to have hole. you guys on ceramical it's a rabbit hole oh <laughs> ceramical? ceramical it's very ceramical also that too <laughs> <laughs> well anything else we love you guys can't wait to see who's the new artist and residents coming up so um incoming resident we're super excited to be hosting Haley jimenez uh-huh. who is uh, an incredible maker coming out of Chicago right now. She also has a twin sister, Sydney Jimenez, who is also a ceramicist. Are we getting a twofer? Ceramics we aren't getting residents? the twofer. We're getting Haley, but Sydney will definitely be coming and doing some collaborative work with Haley while she's there. So that is incredibly exciting. Haley works with novel new media materials. So she does a lot of 2D animation on clay. Wonderful. Which we don't see a lot of. It's very contemporary. We're incredibly excited. And she's she breaking some boundaries. Spanish? That's a good question. I actually don't know if she speaks Spanish, but I would love to find out. I have a guess that maybe she does, actually. All right. Uh, hopefully with that last name, Jimenez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you never know. Well, surprise, surprise. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ceramics. Thank you. As always, uh, there's so much coming down the pipeline for Sonoma Ceramics and Sonoma Community Center. In fact, right now, if you're listening and it's still 2023, Chili Bowl tickets are back on sale. The beloved three seating ceramics and chili kind of ball is oh, coming yeah. up as a theme this year. I love that thing, man. And it's February 24th. It is 22424 this what? year. Oh. Wow. Something weird. Time to bust out the numerology. Oh, yeah. My mouth is water just thinking about chili. I know. He loves the chili. I'm excited to see. I love chili. Oh, those 600 bowls. 600 bowls, 90 gallons. 600 bowls. 40 chili bowls I already have in my cabinet. Thank you, guys. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And, well, let's move on to the next department, shall we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Storygram Network. We're back. Well, we never left, did we? I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What we have here is we have another couple of departments and folks that are on staff here at the community center. I'm super excited. This year we have a bigger group for some reason, huh? We have a lot of people, so we weren't yes. really able to fit them all in here but we just discussed that how yeah you know, we last year we had them party. all in one place and this year we had like groups and it's stuff okay every year has its own little flavor but flavor flavor exactly Hereto. who do we got we got jill that we got jill. Coming up. yes that's me that's jill. me <laughs> what's your official title visual arts director okay and really you lead up painting drawing Fiber arts, fiber arts, and printmaking with Kelly. Gallery, you name it. I mean, we're all Swiss Army around here. She does it all. And next, we're going to introduce Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Happy holidays, Kelly, (laughs) Kelly Autumn, Uh, print coordinator with Jill Valavanis. Yes, and third, we're going to introduce. Emma Diaz. (laughs) Emma Diaz. Emma, what do you do around here? I do facility caretaker. But you're more than that. She's yeah, a, I love a trash to and, trash and fashion. Exactly. <laughs> we know sometimes you'll go out back and, huh, what are those shoes doing down with spray paint on them and stuff glittered all over them? They're yeah, no endless. glitter allowed in the trash and fashion. <laughs> I know. And last but not least, Melissa Agas. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much. Melissa is our interim youth coordinator director, you name it, you have to deal with the little folks, the little people here. Correct. You're here for Lexi, which if everybody didn't know, Lexi just had a baby, but if you're familiar, so she's got her second one. Little Rocco. Little Rocco. Welcome, Little Rocco. (laughs) (laughs) Melissa, how's it been going? It's been going. Sometimes The kids are keeping me active. Yeah. It's good to have the help of the community center. (laughs) Yeah. I'm excited to be here. And what's your background a little bit? Because I know, but maybe share a little bit about you you helped run a dance studio, didn't you? I've had a few different things, (laughs) careers in my life. Yes, I did run a dance studio because as you do, I also love dance 
very much. Amazing. So I did have a little dance studio with a partner in Oakland. And I've also been a teacher. And everything I've done has touched somehow kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Through all of my different careers. And you're up here, just to, I won't go down the rabbit hole. We'll have to talk further with you. But you live in Sonoma, right? As of earlier this year, yes. Okay. And you came from the East Bay? I did. Okay. Right. I was born in New York, but I've been living I didn't in California. Know that. <laughs> yeah, Where I'm in New York? York? Queens. Awesome. But I've been living in California for quite a while now, over 20 years. Yay. Mostly on the East Bay, but now new to Sonoma County. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I know it's a lot here. We're always running around. Like, ah! <laughs> Everybody's got this wonderful new idea, and you're like, oh my Lord, what Feels is like happening? like Sonoma is like a bubble. Like, we don't know what's happening outside Sonoma, mm-hmm. though, you know? Well, I'm not part yeah. of that bubble. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly true. Okay, coming on down the pipeline. Let's go back and let Jill, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, I know there's been some personal accomplishments. I'd love for you to touch on the show that you were in this year. Oh yeah. Well, personal accomplishments. I was excited in 2023 to be accepted into two art shows. One was the 50-50 show in Pacifica at the Sanchez Arts Center. So the challenge was to create 50 different pieces of work in 50 days. Each one was six inches by six inches, and they're all displayed in a big grid. So that was a great kickstart to get me back into art production mode. And then I just received notification a couple of days ago that a piece that I made is accepted into a show called Glimpse at the Arts Guild here in Sonoma. Yay! So it looks like I'm back on the art exhibition bandwagon, which feels really good. Oh, that's amazing. Meg was just talking about that. And that was always where I think that's a constant theme that keeps coming up here as far as managing and promoting artists and here, but how to fulfill your own, (laughs) your own ways, your own artistic ways as well. So I'm happy to have you back because that 50-50 grid was incredible. Some of the work that you did, just real briefly explain what you were doing. Yeah. So I was doing a printmaking technique, a relief printmaking technique, where you put the ink on a surface and then transfer it onto another surface. So I was using heat moldable foam blocks that you heat up with a heat gun. You press it onto the surface of something textured and it holds that texture. Then I roll ink onto it and then I printed it on white cotton fabric. The experimentation of the material that you would find, a lot of it is found objects, right? Right. It was 50 different discarded objects. And it was so fun. I feel like even if you're not an artist or you're a child or something like that, to look up and recognize wait a minute, those are all little toothpicks, you know, gloss right. toothpicks. It was really fascinating. I did everything from paper clips to Legos. and Yeah, it was very cool. Well, congratulations. And you've yeah, got yeah. a lot coming up here because I know you're managing multiple departments. Yeah, I'm always endeavoring to bring more to the center and thus to everyone in Sonoma Valley and beyond. I think everybody should be working on art in some capacity because it's good for your mental health. Yes, all endeavors. And and we have, I feel like, so much coming up, which I'm excited for as far as painting and drawing. I'll let you kind of go into that and Kelly can talk about the printmaking yeah. and the fiber arts. What are some of the, you know, acrylics, oils, if yeah. people are going, okay, So for ready 2024, to- I'm excited to announce that we will be having a drawing and painting open studio Every week on Thursday evenings from 5 to 7.30. And it's already open for registration. It's only $10 to come and work on your drawing and painting with other people and have a snack, have a a bite to eat and a little cup of wine and maybe get some feedback from others. So we already have people signing up. Fantastic. This is on top of what is already taking place on Wednesday nights, Fiber Arts Happy Hour. Yeah. 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 Still going great guns. Everybody's welcome every single Wednesday from four to six, and we just have a good time. And if you're stuck on a project, you're knitting or crocheting, or you need something that you're mending and don't know what to do, just bring it on in and we'll help you. And you also have a Spanish uh, sewing class, right? Yes. Cesta de Costura is on Friday evenings, and it's a sewing machine class conducted completely in Spanish by Gabriel. And I'm his TA, which is really fun. (laughs) And then that also will be expanding into an open studio in Spanish. 
Yes. I think it's kind of the wave of 2024. If there's an open studio, we've heard that's what people are wanting. So we're definitely going more in that direction. Yeah. Decrease loneliness. Decrease loneliness. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And I know there's a lot of great shows coming through your department, not just acrylics and oil painting classes and fiber arts, but there are some artists coming as well through the gallery, right? Right. Our Gallery 212 schedule is getting finalized for pretty much all of next year is getting filled in. Everything from Gabriel, our artist in residence, is going to have a short exhibition and fashion show of his work in February. We have Alex Cole will be doing a solo show also in February. February. We have our instructor showcase, which is up next. That's in January. Exactly. If you're listening to this now, the kickoff will be on Thursday. I believe that is January 4th and it will be up in gallery 212 and come and see. It's always nice to really actually talk to the person that's instructing the class, being down in the office sometimes get questions that we can't ask. It takes an artist and instructor to be able to answer those questions. So now meet them, see the style of their work. Yep. Ask any questions about what they'll be teaching, what it's like to be in the class, and then we encourage you to sign up. So we're going to have as many artists, instructors there as we can to answer any questions and you can see their work. Maybe you can touch just a little base some of the artists that are in there because I know it's not just painting and drawing, it's kind of cross departments, right? Yes. All of the visual arts department plus flamenco dancing will be present. And that's part of Art Walk, which is the first Thursday of every month from 5 to 7.30. So yeah, we're going to have our printmakers exhibiting their work and we have some crocheting, some hand-stitched pieces, oil paintings, you name it. All sorts of work will be in our instructor showcase as well as ceramics. Fantastic. I am so excited. We could go on and on, Jill, and we got to have you back. You know who was really excited to say hello to Jill? It was Oscar. Oscar. Have you seen Oscar? (laughs) Have you seen that guy? I think Oscar will be making an appearance at some point, but I think he was tied up down the hall. We made him clean up after the party. Ah, What a guy. What a guy. But I know I'd love to lead back into, oh, I don't know, some printmaking, Kelly, because printmaking is thriving. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I have a dream team here with Jill. We've got some fun plans for the new year. And Kelly, just like synopsis of your background uh, too. God, <laughs> printmaking, you've been... Yeah, I'm, I'm in it. I'm inky. You started as an artist in residence in Sonoma. And yeah. What was that, 2018? Not that long ago. 19? But pandemic, yeah. I landed here three, four weeks before the pandemic, actually. Yeah, yeah I never left. So (laughs) it's been a ride, but it's been really rewarding. I've recently this year, just looking back on 2023, I became a resident here in Sonoma, just like Melissa. We moved from Oakland. Welcome to Sonoma. (laughs) Yeah. Once Um, you're in. (laughs) It's a little sleepy, but I'm happy to be here. And so I am really excited to close out the year. I did a lot of teaching in 2023. It was a year of transition for me, and I've been excited to actually join the staff so we can take print a you little further. You feel special further. now? Yeah, I do, <laughs> Nice. Tell about screen printing. Screen printing. Yeah. My, adding screen we, printing. Well, we, yes, when we get that sink no. replaced. We will be replacing we, the sink. <laughs> We have some new improvements coming to the print studio. Yeah. One of them is, well, you folks got a screen printing just real briefly. What was that? Like four months ago before the Muse fundraiser. I mean, this is exciting for a lot of people, not just people that don't know particularly some of the more printmaking techniques that are out there, but everybody knows what screen printing is and they want to do it. So one of the difficulties with the most common form of screen printing is you have to apply this goo to your screen (laughs) emulsion it's called emulsion (laughs) this goo Goo. to your screen it's not fun and then you let it cure and then you got to burn it and then you have to burn it with your image using light in a dark room in a dark room and then you have to clean it what Uh, so uh, it's it sounds a process it's quite it's quite a process it's very physical yes and it requires a dark room and so at the community center we are tight on space so we have acquired thanks to rotary of sonoma gave us a grant to purchase this cool little compact (laughs) thermal screen burning machine. 
and it hooks directly up to your computer. So you can just take your image directly from your computer, whatever you've drawn with Procreate or whatever, and burn it directly on the screen through this little machine. So you don't need that dark room anymore? Don't need the dark room. Don't wow. need the emulsion. Wow. Don't need the bright light. Nothing. Uh, yeah. There's size Skip limitations, the but it's, it's about the size of a piece of paper. Yeah. Okay. But it, okay. it's pretty awesome. And wow. Jill single handedly screen printed how oh. many of those? Napkins. And we did. We had a 50? fundraiser and it was briefly, if nobody the knows, muse. we did all of these napkins. It's always for the muse, which is a person that inspires us that year. But one of the things around it is Simon Blattner. They were the muses. He comes from a printing background mm-hmm. and paper making paper background. Making. And that leads us into our Hazelwood. That's right. Okay. And maybe you can just lead like yeah. real briefly how amazing it is. Yeah. Had- we worked with a legend this year, Art Hazelwood. He's also from the Bay Area, dear friend of Simon and Kimberly Blattner. Art designed a, a commemorative poster for the community center. Um, the, the community art- center, which is beautiful. Yes. And we still have those posters for sale. Just a few remain. They're beautiful. They were a lino cut that Art cut himself by hand. We did an amazing print demo upstairs in the print studio. And that imagery of the building was then burned to the screen and printed by Jill. And a team of volunteers. And a team of volunteers. They were beautiful. And you just make it look so easy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what I like, and we should have you on, so you can really actually talk about the details of the different styles of printmaking. Because I know when I try to share exactly all day what it is, <laughs> what is, you know. But everybody just, in town can pop well, into the new print I know. lab. Well, yeah, we're really excited. We're bringing Print Lab January 26th. Mark your calendar. It's going to be the fourth Friday of every month. We've designed a Print Lab is a day where you can come by and in the evening from 5.30 to 7, 7. 5 to 7. It's a drop-in printing experience. It's social. We're going to have the popcorn machine. We'll be starting with heat moldable foam. Jill will be leading an exercise for the first Print Lab. I wouldn't call it an exercise. A quick demo, and then you guys can all do it yourself. Jill's an expert. Jump in and get in. And heat moldable foam printing. (laughs) And our goal is to offer this every fourth Friday of the month. It is all ages, family friendly, and it's just an opportunity to get folks into the print studio to experience what is printmaking. So it'll be a different technique every month. That's right. You're hearing it here, folks. <laughs> Basically, I feel like there should just be memberships for the whole year where you can almost come to an open studio or something, try something on a daily or monthly basis, at least try printmaking. There's the paintings open studio. There's fiber arts open studio. There is so much. And one of our fiber artists that we have that comes on board, because I see her over there, and this is so unlike Emma. If you know Emma Diaz, she's got something to say. Welcome, Emma. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Yes. Thank you for so having me. So you're on our facilities, which I'm so happy you are, because usually when we're in a pickle and it's downpouring rain and we've got to take all the Dia photos off of the outside, you're there. You're just always hands-on helping But more so than that, you are an artist in your own right, and you have done trash and fashion for many years. Yes, only five years so far. (laughs) But you usually do multiple outfits. Yeah, for the last three years. And Emma, I got to take on the road with me last year, and we got to hit up the North Bay Fashion Ball. Yes. And she will wear her outfit at any time. You also put it on for the Muse as well. Yes, and I also wear it for 4th of July. And the 4th of July, (laughs) if you name it. And then we brought it back up here for display for Hispanic Heritage Month. We wanted to do a highlight on some of your trash and outfits. So... What are some of your goals as far as exploring trash and, you know, we all want to go next level of like, I see you in the crochet classes as well. Are you looking at transforming some of the techniques that you're using in fiber arts onto trash and materials? Yes. Basically, it's whatever. If I see new ideas, just write them down. And it's a really wonderful experience. And I try to people get encouraged for the also for the Hispanic people to it, for this community. Good. 
super important. You know what's one of my favorite things too? You're fearless is what I call you. You Thank are you. fearless in exploring art. You're fearless and you're ready to take on anything. I talk to you and you're like, guess where I'm going? I'm going down to San Jose to see Ice Cube tonight <laughs> all by myself. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> and she's fearless on the catwalk. Fearless yes. on the catwalk. I mean, I have to hold you back a little bit sometimes because you are raring to go. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. I can't wait to see you again. Yes. And you also help out in summer camps, don't you? Yes, I do. In the fiber arts Department, camps? Yes. What's your favorite medium do you like doing? So far, I like learning to do hands on paper. That's something different or with the sewing machine. Yeah. But you know, the needles need to Hit it up. Oh, that's Depending interesting. the texture of the paper. Mike Acker did that. You guys should talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Melissa, what are you excited about being here? I know that it's not just working here, but what do you want to take? What would you personally want to do? She's I'm going to be at that fourth Friday thing. I, I think print, print, lab. print lab. Yes. Isn't uh, printmaking cool? It, yes. Yeah. She's yeah. really excited working with me too. She yeah. forgot to say that. That goes without saying. She forgot to mention that. If the kids programming is up. I'm happy to announce that because Gerardo does the culinary part on Wednesdays. And what is it? Culinary on Wednesdays and ceramics? Well, it's, it's general art. Okay. Sometimes they do things with paper. Sometimes they do things with clay. But this coming year, we're going to have themes for every month around Great. our big around world, world and different world. cultures, different holidays, different... That's Things amazing. to celebrate, yeah. I know we, we kicked that off uh, about a year ago, so I'm happy that you're bringing that back. We are uh, too. Where's the first country that we're exploring for January? Nordic. Yes, Gerardo's going to be making meatballs. Yes, Swedish meatballs. <laughs> oh, God, that's my favorite. <laughs> I love those. Have you moved on to February? Do you have some themes worked out uh, each month? I think it's soul food on February or something like that. Yes, we're doing a combo. So we're doing like jambalaya, cornbread, you know, with nice. the kids. So. Yes. Lunar oh, year. Yeah. yeah, lunar year. Yeah, oh, something. Yeah, we're doing, yeah, I think we're doing some Chinese and some we're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. one of the reasons is as if we don't do enough events around here, we got a new one on the horizon that's coming March 2nd. That's really that's been right. pioneered. Yeah. What's that? Extra, oh. extra <laughs> celebration. Oh, God. Um, Are you a dragon, Emma? No, I'm a bunny for this. A bunny. Great. Well, you're the dragon is coming and you, Kelly, you said that it's a very significant year. Oh, yes. Dragon is fierce. Fierce. It's 2024. Look okay. out. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm a horse, but. I'm you're a horse. <laughs> I think I'm a pig. I'm um. a rat. <laughs> but regardless, you really pioneered this celebration coming to Sonoma. And I'm it's really going to take excited. place on March 2nd. Yeah. It's Saturday, March 2nd. It's happening here. So we're going to kind of kick it off in February with yes. classes and talks. Can you just explain a little bit leading up into Lunar New Year? Yeah. So Lunar New Year will begin in 2024 on February 10th. And traditionally it lasts for two weeks. And that is a two week period of celebration, lots of good food, family, creative time, and just, you know, a little downtime, which we won't be taking here because we'll be getting ready for Chili Bowl. <laughs> but yeah, we're really excited to be bringing this programming here. Year of the Dragon is a special year. And we'll be hosting the Redwood Empire Chinese Association Wonderful. from Santa Rosa. They will be doing an amazing performance. And then we will have the poet Ella Wen, our poet laureate from Santa Rosa, wow. who will be reading here. And I think we'll be starting the performance around 5 p.m. on that Saturday. Dragon there involved. will be lions and dragons. Oh my. <laughs> I love it. Mark your <laughs> and calendars. A lot folks. of drums. Russian tigers. A lot of dragons. drums. Oh, oh, drums. That's yeah. amazing. I, yeah. I love that. It's going to get real loud. All right. <laughs> and I real tasty. It. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, I heard too. Yeah. So we're going to talk. Yeah, we're going to talk. Yeah, yeah. I think I have Keep... a friend that makes a, his own dumplings. You know, I, know, that I guy. tried them. Yeah. And they're delicious. delicious. <laughs> and they're a bargain. Can't wait. 
So <laughs> there's lots of things that we have been collaborating and working on. And I'm excited that we're kind of all on the same page of collaborating with different yeah. cultural experiences and bringing the arts and culinary into it. Is there anything, Melissa, Emma, Jill, that I'm kind of leaving out for now? Because we definitely want to individually have you back and talk further about your departments. But what do you think? Are we wrapping it up? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Put a fork in it. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Storygram Network. Hey, Molly, we're back. Huh? We are back. We have the fun crew today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are on our epic saga of the Pockets Party of Sonoma <laughs> Community Center. So this is the longest one we have done. Well, uh, we saved the best for last. No, don't tell anybody <laughs> else that. But well, who we have with us today is, I'm just going to let you guys introduce yourself because this is a core crew right here. Hi, I'm Mary Catherine Cutcliffe, and I'm the development director here at the <laughs> Sonoma Community Center. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vanessa Runlin, and I'm the executive director here at the Sonoma Community Center. <laughs> and I'm Mike Acker, and I'm a facilities worker here at the Community Center. And local and, historian. Oh, historian. This is my second time on the podcast. I'm Josh Cutler. I'm the director of operations and finance. What's for lunch, buddy? No, I'm just joking. What is for lunch, Rado? <laughs> what was for lunch today? It was a lot today. It was epic. It was. I'm Gerardo still in the food ribs. coma today. He made some, some kebabs. kebabs. And yeah. my little ninja smoker. Ninja wood fire. How do you make that much food in that I small know. of a grill? When you open it, it's like the Willy Wonka. It's like you when you put something in, it's so huge in there. It looks small, but it's huge. It's kind of amazing. And didn't it you is. make for a posada that just happened, pasole for over yeah. 300 people? I did, I did. Like so, two big pots. Yeah. yeah. We went heavy on the last podcast of what's coming up in the culinary department. Yeah. So... Listen to that with uh, Maria yeah. if you want to know what's happening in the culinary I know. department. Check us out. But we are really going epic style. So now we're going to go in. We have some new faces that aren't new, but old faces. And oh, I don't can know. I just call <laughs> you MC? I'm new looking over at MC. Oh, I didn't mean old faces. That's terrible. I know. I know. Who's calling old? Shorty? You said old faces. <laughs> She's like, new but old, you know? Well, let me just... <laughs> That's so good. This is, we're really, we did just celebrate my birthday, giddy. didn't we? Oh, no. Oh. Old. Well, MC, I can call you MC here. Absolutely. Everybody, everybody does. Everybody in town. And that's MC's <laughs> real voice, which is a great voice, by the way. So don't pretend like with your fancy voice. This is your true voice. I love it. Um, <laughs> MC worked here. We say a, a decade ago. ago. A decade ago. Yeah, for about three years. Yeah, I was the special event manager back when we did the Fourth of July parade and city party. Yeah, and, those and there were, were huge. I don't know four of us that were office staff. I that think being there were three, I guess, and then we grew when Josh joined. Josh, you were here too. Mike was in the office at the time. Oh, so there was five. So Mike was here. Mike was doing rentals. You're right. Six. Margaret was here. So Tony Castrone was the executive director okay. back at that time, and she's the one who invited me to come and apply for the position. And Jesse Irving, who is Kathy Sweat's son, he worked here. Who was here. the executive director at that time? No. Kathy had moved on. Tony was the executive oh, director. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, good. Yep. We can really go down the rabbit hole here, huh? Mm -hmm. I was so happy. I got, I think, the last year of 4th of July. Whew. Boy, was it a blessing when the... <laughs> we, I mean, we love our community, but so thankful that the fire department volunteers took it over. Absolutely. Because it's, so it's a much, lot. It's a lot. And they have a system yeah. to organize and mobilize humans in a safe manner. And it's kind of amazing didn't that the community center, what was there like eight people here? Excel at that. Could actually put on a 4th of July. What which we had a big, huge volunteer pool. No? Yeah. Yours wasn't safe? It was, it was safe. safe. No, it, it was, was it was safe. safe. It was so safe that we actually it wasn't put safe up staff. We put <laughs> barriers up on First Street East. We had to source metal barricades because right. the crowd surge headed into the parade. We literally had to make it safe. And we hired private security to come. What? Yeah. Yeah. We were like, no, no, native sons, 
Sorry, we need to hire <laughs> the a private bit security beyond. and bring them oh, in. God. And we had a dance floor. That we and owned we had the dance, a dance floor. floor. We had to set it up and break it down. And Absolutely. About four o'clock or five o'clock, whenever that event ended, and it's like 105 degrees in the plaza, <laughs> yeah. you have to pick up those dance floor pieces. That's right. Because on the 5th of July, it can't look like anything ever happened there. <laughs> you had to arrive at 6 a.m. with a team of volunteers and pick up all of the trash and leftover little bits of debris in the like grass. Like the Navy SEALs, huh? Oh. Well, you know what blew my mind is then you would turn around and do the city party that was always at the end of July as well, which it still happens, but it's put on by the city now. So that always blew my mind that you... We put a giant stage on Spain Street. We closed Spain Street <laughs> because it became so huge in the plaza that we outgrew. It wasn't safe. So as a safer <laughs> event, we moved in the stage to Spain Street and Jill did kids activities. I set up a tent back in the day and hired Jill to come in and do kids activities. Was it was very By the fun. way. Oh, fun. <laughs> I did start when Kathy was... The executive director. Oh, so my and really? that year, she was the, a horsewoman, and there was a bunch of people riding horses in the parade. She more or less made me get a broom and a, a oh. shovel and a wheelbarrow and pick follow them behind them in the parade and pick up the horse. Dude. That's a very <laughs> important role. It's a coveted there role. There are photographs, unfortunately. You are. Oh, well, wow. you know what? What we want to do for our community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Mike, for your you service. Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Wow. <laughs> and here we are, years later. God, we could get off lucky just building giant puppets for 4th of July now. This is great. I love the walk down memory lane. Wait, go ahead, MC. You're, no, you're ready. There's no, more. I'm letting you drive. I'm not going to ask a question because I want to desperately, but I'm not Oh, gonna. you always can. Don't be shy. Well, I was just going to say, who's the newest person in the room? So Mike, it sounds like, has been on staff for the duration of time. And then I had my little time and I went away and then I came back in May of this year. Who is the director of Josh development this year? came in 10 years ago, about now in December. And then the new That's not what the, the IT said. <laughs> Our executive director. I am Vanessa. the new kid on the block. Yes, that is true. And Vanessa, we're going to have you on in January to oh, hear a little bit nice. of your story. Your okay, life story. I'll save the story for then. Save the Please. story. The whole of because it. Because it's a good one. I sat in on a singing workshop with the wonderful Josh Bailey about a month ago. And what I didn't know... I mean, I knew you busted some tunes, but apparently you led an acapella group. I didn't lead it, but I was in an acapella group in wow. college. Okay. Yes, I okay. sang we're acapella. And Mike and I were just talking about singing the Messiah, Handel's Messiah in choirs. Yes. yes. So w that is a passion that Mike and I have uh, <laughs> together. Stay tuned for the Community Center Choir 2024. It's going to be sing-along Messiah uh, night uh, here well, you at, know, Josh at the Community Cutler Center. also participated in some singing just the other night. You did? What is it that you take place with the wonderful Rotary Sunrise of Sonoma oh. last Friday what? night around the square? Oh, yeah, a bunch of singers here. The Sunrise Rotary does do caroling every Christmas. Oh, nice. oh, oh. So we hit up. Cafe La Haye and uh, Are you singing Pop for Monk food? And a couple Bring other. me some flesh. Uh. <laughs> Is that the kind of characters you sing? Was Our quality was Empire. a little bit down this year because a certain member of the Rotary group did bring kazoos and handed them out to the kids. So we were uh, run out of a few establishments. Uh, <laughs> Nothing like a good kazoo to really mess up, up a Christmas carol. <laughs> Grandma was ran over by a burr, burr, reindeer. Burr, burr, burr. reindeer. Oh, we're, we're really losing it here. But <laughs> believe it or not, that holiday classic was for the first time. Gerardo had never heard yes, of that song. Never heard and that song Vanessa, before. we love having you on board because... <laughs> You as I bring you all the good music and the yeah. dance. And it was a dance. It was a nice dance, too. Yes. I like yeah. to perform in the office to Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer on special occasions. Were it you, works for a little It does work. Were you here when Vanessa walked in with her hair all soaked in? Yes. Like the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Ali Sheen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't it was you forget about me. We really are. I went home. 
when I told my daughter they said I looked like the guy from the Breakfast Club, and I was feeling like, <laughs> what is going on? Wait, are and we she's talking like, Judd no, Nelson or yes. are we talking Ali Sheedy? Judd Nelson. Then I thought maybe I was Ali Sheedy, but he said no, I was Judd Nelson. <laughs> she had that. She had like that black coat, she you did. know, and, and she looked like a rocker. And I'm like, all right, you know. And I told my daughter, and she's like, no, mom, that's a compliment. <laughs> Chud Nelson, your doppelganger. Chud Nelson? (laughs) It it has been raining on and off, and I think you stepped out for, I don't know, I got caught in the rain. You got caught in the rain. I did. Yes. Caught in the rain, huh? Do you like bean enchilada? (laughs) And getting caught caught in in the the rain. rain. (laughs) We swear we get work done around here. You got us in a giddy moment. But I'll rope it back in. I love this. This is so fun. 2024, let's talk about, we've had incredible changes and really good changes that have happened for this year. Vanessa, you're on board. Mike, you came back actually in 2022, right? We put on a gallery show, the 70th gallery show to kick off 2022, which is a lot of work. (laughs) And it was a great show. What a great show. show. We will have it back. And your art is actually up in upstairs as well. Maybe kick us off going into 2024 what that looks like for the panels up there and share a little bit about the artwork that's up there of yours. And up there, I mean, second floor, the second floor. Center. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, well, the, I did a series of large photo collages of, that depict the history of the plaza in Sonoma. And we had them, thanks to Vanessa, printed on aluminum panels. They're Wonderful. actually slightly smaller than the original art, but now they're hanging in the hallway up there. And... I guess our plan is to take them around to schools. and So we're going to take the panels out to four different community sites. I think the library, Vintage House, Boys and Girls Club, and La Luz possibly, and maybe Creekside. And we are going to be creating a mural here from people's perceptions. They're going to be able to see Mike's work. Mike talked about insurance images laid over old insurance maps. Right. There are these maps that were drawn in the late 19th century by a company for the purposes of fire insurance. So they identified all the buildings, where the wells were, where a a lot of other, a lot of sometimes the property owners and the uses of the buildings. So they're really great documents because they would tell you a lot about the past, what was going on. And then Mike overlaid current Sonoma celebrities. Photographs from all eras. So photographs from that period, I mean, like Ronald the 1880s. Reagan's even on there. Yeah, Ronald Reagan's on there because he attended the opening of the movie The Sea Wolf at the Sebastiani Theater. Oh, so interesting. And, like. um, so you learn about the history, and so then we'll have people look at the panels and kind of interpret their piece of Sonoma history, and then we'll incorporate that work into a mural that will live here at the community center. Is there a portion of this, when they come to see your artwork, is there anywhere that kind of explains about the artwork? written down or history of Sonoma QR code. I saw yeah. Jim doing something up there that kind of shares a little bit about Well, they the kind of, they tie into Jim Silverman's Plaza History mm-hmm. videos, which are online. Do we have the QR codes? The QR I do. Okay. Okay. The QR codes are so up. You can, so you can, it helps explain a little yes. bit about it, yeah, of, of the artwork. Lot. And that's exciting. I, th- I think it's awesome. It's going to be a great community home. project and it's really looking at the untold history of Sonoma Valley, the untold stories. Yeah. So we have that ties into our Lunar New Year celebration. Yeah. Because we shared us with the Lunar New Year. Good. What's yes. happening? All that pieces are tying together and then it'll culminate in a mural that we'll have here at the community center. That's amazing. It's going to be very cool. I love it. And Mike, personally, we're going to have you back on as well, because I'd love to explore more about what's coming up for you and your artwork. Where can they find you right now as far as more information of what you're doing as an artist coming up? Uh, Well, my website. Any website? It is mca-studios.com. Okay. You do great newsletters. So yeah, you have to subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Subscribe to my newsletter. I've got, I'll I'll put you on the list. Um, (laughs) There's a lot, um, there's a lot of other things going on that we can talk about at some point. We will. Fantastic. And Josh, what are your hopes and dreams for Sonoma Community Center and you personally next year? 
Uh-oh. He's looking That's at That's a me big like, question. I mean, usually I know it's what's for lunch on a daily basis. What's for lunch? I really pretty much just go day to day, you know, yeah. just like Josh can food. eat a burrito every day. Doesn't matter. He'll eat a burrito every day if you get him a burrito. I'm a simple man. What can I yeah. say? Also, though, but we have to thank Josh because he did the Thanksgiving uh How was Thanksgiving dinner. this year? This year. So Which every year cool. we do with Rotary, Gary Edwards, everyone, the, the free Thanksgiving that takes place at the Vets Building. And, oh, wow, how many people did you feed this year? So we were back up. What we kind of used to do pre-COVID, we had about 500 people come out. Wow. It's an event that's been going on for, we don't really know, 30, 40, maybe even 50 years in some capacity. Gary Edwards has kind of been the point person on it for the last 25 years or so. I'm in the community center, I like to say, you know, we, we take all the credit, but we're not doing all the work. Gary, Rotary, a uh, ton of volunteers all really make the event what it is. We kind of just handle coordination and some of the, the sort of admin side of it. But yeah, every year, Thanksgiving Day, the Snoma Veterans Hall, 3 p.m., amazing food, good company. Come on down and grab a meal. <laughs> I had a great story that happened when I was there in the morning to help with the decorations and all that, which really <laughs> kind of takes care of its own. So many people are helpful. But someone had mentioned that a couple came up that were unhoused and they were living in their car and they were in Santa Rosa and there actually was nothing on Thanksgiving Day to be able to eat a meal in Sonoma County at that time. I could be unsure about this, but... That was kind of amazing. We did have people come from Santa Rosa and all around the county that came to the Sonoma Thanksgiving. So can't say it enough, Josh and Gary and Rotary and everybody that helps put that amazing day to celebrate with. So We cooked about uh, 600 pounds or more of turkey, <laughs> sausage. Turkey lurkey. Yep. Wow. It was delicious. I was there. I was cutting though the turkeys and the sausages. <laughs> Gerardo thought he was just going to show up and hang out, but we put him to yeah, work. I know. That's well, okay. You I have like, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's on the building horizons for 2024? What's the plan, Stan? Projects. Lots of little projects. <laughs> There's always something in a building this old. I'll ask what Vanessa always says. Is the heater ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> soon. <laughs> Very soon. We will have heat in 2023. <laughs> For those that didn't know, we had a part that went out on the boiler room. So it's been a frigid December and we can't thank our tenants hey, some, enough for sticking some of with us, us. Some Any, of us enjoy it. Anybody in that community that doesn't have a refrigerator, just bring your stuff here. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty cool here. So, you know, it will stay cool. One giant refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. MC, since you are back on this development board, and we are so happy to have you. Well, thank you. Congratulations on a successful Muse for this year fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Best ever Mm -hmm. as far as fundraising and bringing the concerts, you and Vanessa for bringing the Summer Series concerts to Sonoma. Great get together. So I know you always have that glint in your eye. What's for 2024? That's such a good question, Molly. Well, all the great things that we have, it's really working together with programming and being here for the community to provide what we need. And you listen well to that. Thank you. We'll do the muse again. We don't have a date. We'll do, or a muse, exactly. We're talking about that. We will do Chili Bowl. And we'll so have sponsors. We've already got one. Yeah, right? great. We've already 2024. Which so is I guess February I'm talking 24th. about events. Well, it seems that's, like. that's heavy, your background. Yeah. And believe it or not, as much as you did that, you're over at Pets Lifeline for a time, it's in your heart and soul. And if there's an event, even if you don't want it to happen, like a lighted tractor parade, well, MC is going to rope you in. You're going to do it. And guess what? You end up having fun. Oh, my God. I know, so. The lighted tractor parade <laughs> was so much fun. And I, I hope that people recognized us. I don't yeah. know. I wasn't doing it selfishly, like, oh, look. But I did kind of want to be like, hey, look, the community center's in the parade. <laughs> um, and it wasn't necessarily my idea because it was Winter Art Market weekend. 
and Vanessa was away, and I told her about it, and she said, we have to be in it. Oh. And so I was like, these two okay. together, <laughs> next thing you know. And so I started calling around for a tractor that day. <laughs> so what was it is the Lighted Tractor Parade was kind of a last-minute thing by, it's not the Vintners. The Vintners and Growers Alliance. Growers Alliance, which took over Vintage Festival last year. And I have a feeling, because they had the Lighted Parade for a number of years for the Vintage Festival, they probably got... Oh, how come you're not doing a lighted parade anymore? Why? That is exactly right? what Robin Sebastiani said. There were so many complaints about okay. not having it at a vintage festival. They decided to make it its own event. And let me tell you, it was like an old school Sonoma parade. It was so great. We thought we just looked amazing. We pull around the corner to line up with the 26 entries and there's snowmen like 30 feet tall, fire coming out of the hot air balloon. And it was- Vehicles it was, covered in lights. We we really thought amazing. hands down- Ours was going to be the yeah, best of the best. It wasn't. We had handmade giant lights. Yes. We had to Pretty use crazy. a giant generator because, yeah. well, thank a big you. generator. Thank you to Brittany and Kundi Jason and Jason Kundi. Kundi family. They really pulled it out all yeah. the stops. Jason bought a Christmas tree, a flocked Christmas tree, and it screwed it to the base of the yeah. trailer. And, yeah. Anyway. Can we get creek lights next year? Creek lights? What do you mean? If you've ever been to a movie premiere. And you have the big spotlight. Oh, oh, those yeah. are creek lights. lights. Right. Yes. Wow. Maybe we should get like the Batman one, you know? <laughs> just so the community center and then the sky. This is the right time of year to have those lights, Josh. That's a pretty darn good idea. I'll work on it. <laughs> Last time I had to rent them, they were very expensive for the film festival. We had them here we'll at the see. community center one time for the premiere of the Jack London Film Festival. <gasps> Oh. I remember seeing those from Boys Hot Springs, you know, the West Side. Yeah, I've and seen it was them. really yep. just Safeway reopening. I don't even know where were they from. <laughs> <laughs> for what? It was Safeway. I'm like, I gotta go down there. Something's happening downtown. It was the grand opening of Safeway. Right? Oh wow. Uh, but so. did you buy something? <laughs> did they get you in the doors? No. Oh, but you know, they good lost. enough. Good enough. Right, I was right. expecting a movie premiere. Oh man, we're going on. So more MC. I know more good things to come. Vanessa. Yeah. We will continue to do all the great things that the community center does. All our signature events, trash in, chili bowl. We're going to reintroduce and grow Summers at the Center. So every Thursday during the summer, there'll be some oh. kind of event here. We're going to have a, three concerts this summer. So we had two last summer. We'll have three and then we'll have a Hispanic Heritage event. So we're just taking what we do well and expanding it and, and making every event even that little bit better. We've had a great year. Yeah. All the while, enjoying ourselves. What I love about the group of people that I work with now is that we laugh and have fun all the time. Not saying that I didn't do that with other places I've worked, because <laughs> I did. But this is really, really special. We've got a super special group of people that complements each other. And I feel like the sky's the limit with what we can produce and do for the community. Hey, Gerardo. Yes. What are we doing for Papa's Day? Oh, yeah. We're, me and Josh were thinking about doing something, even for Mother's Day. We're doing for something for Mother's Day, you know, something fancy for them. Got to be fancy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fancy. Mimosas, you know, you name it, you know. Bougie, you know? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then for Father's Day. Well, how about a kid's recital? Because that's happening the day before <laughs> oh, that's for Mother's right, Day. That's so. right. So we're doing something for Father's Day, too. We're doing something big, you know, hungry. <laughs> food. A lot food, of food. A lot of food. Maybe some beers or something. Who knows? Maybe some, you know, Bring fire truck. Fire Sounds truck. Sounds really well yes. planned out. Yeah, exactly. Beer, fire <laughs> so, trucks. We don't want to give everything away too yeah, early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is how it starts, folks. All the wonderful events at the community center. Some of them come to fruition. Some of them always come with ideas, but... I think one of the goals, Molly, though, also is more community events, like the concerts that we put on that are yes. really low cost or no cost so we can bring community together. I know one thing we've been talking about in here is, you know, everybody's isolated and there's this feeling of loneliness in the United States right now. So that's something that we can offer to the community by bringing people together and having music and food and the things that like get people excited and bond them together. Yeah. So that's a lot of things that we'll be looking at this year and maybe like a film club or a book club that where people can come monthly and be with other people that share a similar interest so that there's ways that we can connect the community more and make, you know, start building those bridges and connections again. 
And I think you're not only onto this, but it is happening because after talking to programming, if you really start to think about it, you can come here during the month and almost attend. You can come to Fiber Arts Happy Hour. There's printmaking and open studio. So almost every department is having some sort of open studio or place to come and connect. As Jill said, the same thing. Also, these community events are another other thing. And there's fabulous program is still taking place on Monday, medicinales. Yeah, planta medicinales still on. And then we have the yoga too, Uh which is pretty cool. Yoga. So there's opportunities. Yeah, we'll be having more bilingual programming. More bilingual programming too. So hopefully next year we get more instructors that are bilingual for the Latino community. Absolutely. So if anyone has interest in developing. I do want to thank Vanessa. She's really open with everything. So thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to have you. If Anna. I look back on this past year, what a great year we've had. I mean, it's just been really exciting and fun, like MC says, and we've done so much. I think everybody should be really proud about this year. And I just love working with this great team. So good, good. Well, well, now we've had our epically long. And if you have made this program, it's brought to you by unofficially <laughs> what? Costa's Costa Tacos. Costa Tacos. Pretty soon we are going to have this them in the January. New, this is the new news. Yes. This so. is what you've been waiting for, for the whole podcast to find out where's Costa's Tacos. Mondays next year, starting January, in the middle of January, they are going to be here at like a five o'clock so they are going to have their taco stand here so you guys can come and enjoy their tacos here evening location yes you heard it here first yes. well we want to thank our whole community here thanks for Woo-hoo. hanging in there subscribe to our podcast and just uh oh and, and if you're not a member of the sonoma community center i highly encourage you to go onto our website and join become a member your membership supports all of the endeavors that we do absolutely part of the cool club kid Cool Kids Club. <laughs> cool Kids Club. Sorry. Hey, if you want to teach us language classes, we're open to that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you and a happy holidays. And if you're listening to this in 2024, well, you know there's a lot to do here. So yep. come to Sonoma Community Center.org or give us a call and stop by. Who is it? Hello? Oscar, is that you? Hello now. I'm hey, here. man. What's I'm up? here for recording. Where were you, man? I thought you wanted to talk to Jill earlier. What? You already recorded? Yeah, we did. What? Oh, man. Oh, man. Nobody told me. I know. It was you and Kat. Kat oh. wasn't here either. Wait, and Sean? And Sean. Oh, well, we were having our own party, uh, and we're yeah? sorry we missed it. Yeah, I heard you were in the cleaning crew today. Cleaning up your ribs mess. <laughs> I hope you enjoy those ribs, man. Well, happy to be on board at the Community Center. I hear there might be something special coming up next year, like a family reunion of my people. Stay what? tuned. Nice. Puppet Festival 2024. Oh, Happy New Year, Gerardo. Happy New Year to you too, Oscar. Nice seeing you, huh? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.